In May 2017, reports circulated that a dog-eating festival in China was being banned. Activists and animal lovers worldwide breathed a sigh of relief that this barbaric festival, where hundreds of animals, in particular dogs, are sold for human consumption, had finally been ended. In June that year, the festival again went ahead. Let's finally put a stop to this. YouTube, I know you're watching, so let's get this trending and spread the word even more. For millennia, China and many other Asian countries have consumed dog as part of their diet. And although the tradition is fading and more and more Chinese residents are opposed to the consumption of canine meat, there is one festival that is casting a dark cloud over the entire industry. It's called the Lychee and Dog Meat Festival. And if you're an animal lover, then this video will be difficult to watch. But don't lose hope because with your help, we can put a stop to this and impose a ban for 2018 to prevent the festival taking place. Before I can go further, it's important for me to say that this is not about stopping people from eating dogs. It's incredibly selfish to think that because most of the world consider dogs to be pets, that they somehow fall into a different category of animal. It's contradictory to be so against dog eating, yet sit there and eat a beef steak. You have no idea how that cow was raised, what it was subjected to, and how inhumanely it may have been killed, just to end up on your plate. But this isn't about meat eating, this is about the abuse and torture of dogs and cats. The Yulin Festival takes things a step further, as does the consumption of dog meat in China, since it's entirely unregulated. It's the way in which the dogs are treated, and the quantity of which is sold, that is the problem. Although it's hard to report exactly what goes on during this festival, since participants are not always welcoming to media attention, we know the suffering of these helpless animals begins days before the event. Either taken from the streets as strays or pets, or collected from filthy dog breeding facilities, the animals are forced into incredibly small metal cages by the dozen and loaded onto trucks. Depending on their distance from Yulin, which is in southern China, they will begin their journey in these disgusting conditions. Can you seriously imagine what those dogs must be experiencing? On arrival to Yulin, the dogs and cats will be publicly displayed for people to purchase, some of which still have collars on, proof that they were once much-loved pets stolen from their owners. If this sounds like a rumor, then in 2017, over 1,300 dogs were rescued by an organization who intercepted a truck transporting dogs to that year's festival. Police confirmed that the majority of the dogs were stolen and not allowed for consumption, and 40% carried infectious diseases, making them unsafe to eat. After being sold, the dogs are then publicly slaughtered, oftentimes in the most inhumane ways, clubbed over the head before having their throats cut, organs removed, skinned, and either thrown into boiling water or grilled. There are even some stories that the more terrified the dogs are, then the more benefits their meat will bring to the consumer. For this reason, it's said dogs are killed in front of each other, skinned and boiled alive. You're probably wondering why they do this. While well, the main point of the festival, which takes place over approximately 10 days, and during the summer solstice in June, is for supposed ridiculous health benefits and traditions. It goes back to when poor Chinese people did not have enough food to weather the winter. So they chose a day as a special time that they could eat a large quantity of meat to intake enough energy to confront winter. The Yulin festival is basically the opposite of this, taking place just before summer. The dog meat is believed to warn off the heat felt through the hotter months, as well as cure diseases and rid evil spirits. Despite there being zero medical or psychological evidence to support this, how anyone could think consuming the meat of a terrified and tortured animal, which oftentimes is disease, could warn off evil spirits is inconceivable. But there is a moment of hope. The Chinese people are rapidly changing their views on dog meat. In recent years, despite restrictions on how many and what breed of dog can be kept as a pet, attitudes have changed. Dog ownership has become very popular, with one in every 10 Chinese citizen owning a dog. Reports also show that less than 5% of people in China are frequent dog eaters. Having said that, there are still around 10 to 20 million dogs and cats killed for human consumption each year in China. Although recently, China banned killing dogs in public, giving us even more of a reason to rid the world of the Yulin Festival, as it's not only barbaric, but now also illegal. 
This makes it even more believable that the Chinese government still allow the Yulin festival to continue. They claim they are powerless, as it's not an official event, but since the festival is blatantly flouting China's very clear laws on animal welfare for human consumption, you would think something could be done. The lack of action by authorities has led to activists going to the festival and trying to save dogs and cats by buying them themselves. But this can only save a small percentage, and more action needs to be taken. I don't know what's happened and how humans have got so off track with nature and the world, but do you seriously think this is how it's all meant to be? Can you imagine one of the dogs at this festival killed an attendant? That would be all over the news. But honestly, what's the difference? Maybe we have put ourselves at the top of the food chain, but there is the cycle of life, and then there is brutally torturing and causing disgusting levels of torture to other animals who can't fight back. And if they do, they get put down. Can you imagine a dog took a human hostage and treated it the way these dogs are treated at Yulin? We are all one and are here to serve some kind of purpose. I don't know what that purpose is, and that's the beauty of life. But the way everything comes together is fascinating. The plants that keep the ecosystem in check, the animals who provide so much for humans and the planet. Studies are even showing that a cat's purr can heal human health issues and speed up recovery. Loving a cat and giving it a reason to be happy and purr does that, killing it does not. Yet we are still killing each other and all our animal friends, in unnecessary quantities and practices. You and me both are pretty angry right now, so I'm going to end it here. Please support this cause and put an end to everything I've talked about in this video. The links will be provided in the comments and the description. You may feel your vote isn't much, but it really is and makes a big difference. Thank you for watching and please share this with as many people as you can.